I do watercolours. Do you? Let me show you something. I call that one old Greg. I did it in that one. I call that one old Greg. And this one. Do you know what I call that one? Old Greg. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. I got some more. I got these two. That one's Bailey's. And that one's Bailey's a bit bigger. And that one's as close as you can get to Bailey's without your eyes getting wet. Mm, that is quite a portfolio you've got going on there. But I really should be heading off, so it's been good. We could do some watercolours together. You and I. Well, that sounds like great fun. Let's do it in the week there, Greg. What do you mean? Well, you're free Thursday at all? Why can't we do it now? Well, you know, I'm a busy man, Greg. You know, I've got things to do. Howard Moon, man about town. <laughs> do you love me? Oh, dear. Do you love me? Um, Gonna have to pretend I didn't hear that, Greg. Do you think you could ever love me? Uh, it doesn't really work like that, Greg. How does it work? Tell me how it works. Well, you get to know someone, you hang out, you see where that goes, this, that, the other, eventually, you know. I don't know you. You know me, hmm? What about the boat times? That wasn't really a time, was it, Greg? That was more of a just, uh, an exposure. That was our first date, hmm? You pulled me up with your strong arms. Oh dear, look, Greg, I don't know you. Oh, you know me. You seen my downstairs mix-up? Yeah, I didn't ask to see that, did I? What did it mean to you to see that? Did it mean you love me? No, it didn't. Could you learn to love me? No, I couldn't. I don't love you. You do love me. No, I don't. You do love me. No, I don't. You love me, and you've seen me, and you know me. I'm old Greg. Yeah, I know you are. You've told me 89 times now. You must love me exactly as I love you. Well, I don't love you. And to be honest, you're starting to get on my nerves a bit now. If anything, I find you slightly pathetic. So deal with that. Maybe I will deal with it. Hmm? Maybe I'll deal with it the way I dealt with Curly Jefferson. You know what, Greg? Maybe I was being a bit hasty there uh, when I said I didn't love you. Perhaps now in this light with you and the tutu and the water playing off your seaweed, maybe I could love you. Maybe I was lying because when you do love someone, sometimes you say you don't because you're playing hard to get, playing a game. Games? Yeah, I was just playing a game with you. Love games? That's right, love games, Greg. Love games? Do you love me? Are you playing your love games with me? I just want to know what to do because I need your love a lot. Oh, come on now. Do you love me? Are you playing your love games with me? I just want to know what to do because I need your love a lot. Oh, come on now. Moving too fast, this isn't a race. Mm, we're back out and lower the pace now. Slow it down and give me some space. Mm, moving too fast, this isn't a race. Ah, ah. Welcome to the Mirror World! Who are you? I am Mr. Susan, guardian of the mirrors. What do you seek, stranger? Oh, I'm just looking for my mate Howard. He's, he's in limbo. Ah, limbo bimbo. One of these mirrors does lead to limbo, but only one. You must choose wisely, for there are over 17 mirrors in the mirror world. <laughs> mirror world? It's not really a mirror world, is it? It's more of a small room. What? Well, no, it isn't large, but a mirror will make a room appear larger. And anyway, you failed to take into account 
My mirror balls. Look at them shine. Look at them shine. Look at them shine. Look at them shine. Oh! Look at them shining. Oh, it's cold. That's enough. Now, it is time to choose, but choose wisely. For if you choose wrongly, you will replace me here in the mirror world for all eternity with nothing but your own reflection for company. <laughs> Sounds all right to me. What? Staring at your own reflection forever? Sounds great. You know, if you look over there, you can see your hair from every angle. <laughs> How cool is that? Oh, vanity. I too was vain like you. Let me tell you the story of how I came to be in this mirrored prison. I haven't really got time for this. Freddy Fabrics. So we could move it along, you know? I've got to get to limbo. My name is Mr. Susan. And now it is time for you to do the choosing. Will it be this one here? Will it be this one here? Which one will you choose? Win or lose? Choose it now. Which one will it be? Which one will you choose? Get out of here, because I've got to clear all this rubbish away. This isn't rubbish, this is my home. That hole that you crawled through is my front door, sir. There's a skateboard there, that's my transportation unit. This old peach, why it's my hat, sir. Look. Yeah. Peach hat. <laughs> Everything's different in my world. Let me explain. I look at things that are different. Are you a prince? I am called Vince, but I'm not a prince. Vincey, princey. <laughs> I did a rhyme. Well done. You should have a goblet of wine. It's not really a goblet, is it? It's sort of a tennis ball cut in half. <laughs> what is this? Vimto? It's blood from a cat's face. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. You like my joke? i got to go, actually, cos you're a freak. L no, no. I didn't always used to be a freak. Perhaps if you heard my story, you'd understand me more. I really like stories. I've got pictures with it and animation. Cartoons, cool. Move my galoshes and take your seat. These are not really galoshes, are they? They're Johnny's. They're my squishy boots. <laughs> Everything's different in the world of me. OK, let's have fun. Yeah, that's not the film I meant to show. That's the nighttime film for me in the night times for the fuzzy tingle time. Howard Moon, you are to be thrown into the pit of eternal fire for heinous crimes. But Bolo led a clean life. Yeah, but you bummed that fox. That's just a rumor. No smoke without fire, which incidentally you'll be seeing quite a bit of from here on in. <laughs> Everyone's a comedian down here, aren't they? Shut your pie hole! Now prepare to die! Aren't I already dead? Well, it hurts more the second time. Now prepare to be cast into the eternal flames! Wait! Who are you? I'm Vince Noir. This is my mate. There's been a mix-up. You can't burn him. Who's going to stop me? I am. I appreciate the gesture, but a bit of a wasted journey, that, wasn't it? Did you bring anything? Like a gun or a fork? Enough! Now you shall burn. You and your wife with the ridiculous hair. Ridiculous hair? Have you seen yours? It's like split end central. Shut up. Well, look at it. It's an auburn fuzz. Shut your gob! You look ridiculous. It's like a ginger ball bag. Shut up, I say! I've always had problems with my hair, even as a child. 
It's not curly. It's not straight. It's somewhere in between. If I wash it, it becomes too dry. If I leave it, it becomes too greasy. I can't do a thing with it. Listen, have you heard of product? Straighteners? Finishing gel? Finishing gel? What is finishing gel? Where have you been? I could sort your hair out in six minutes. Why didn't you tell me about this? Davy, Nemo? You could do this for me? This is sheer liquid wonderment. For this smashing gift, I shall set you both free. Thank you. Don't thank me. Thank Naboo's miracle wax. Look at me. I'm so confident and feel strong and super sexy. Hit it! I'm the ape of death and I don't care. Cause I'm a monkey with a lovely hair. It's all fluffy and shiny too. Cause I got that miracle wax from a boo-hoo. First test. What test? It is written that the chosen one must destroy the evil sand beast that has cursed our tribe for hundreds of tens of years. Unless perhaps you are not the chosen one. No, no. He is the chosen one. Good luck. Good luck, my lovely lady lumps. Bye. <laughs> I am Sandstorm. I'm Vince. Pleased to meet you. Ow! Feel the power of my grateful glass paper fans. <laughs> that hurt you, Bumba Clark. That's just the beginning. I plan to send you down to a pulp, cowboy. Why? What? I am Sandstorm. Yeah, so what? Stop the talk. Prepare for the chafing. There's something wrong with you. No, there isn't. You're all angry. Yes, I am angry. You've got no charm or charisma. There's nothing to you. You're just violence in a tool belt. Who are you to judge me? I'm frustrated. Why? Because I cannot love. It's a living hell for me. What is? My life. I'm made from sandpaper. Yeah, I'm getting that. I can't touch anything. If I do, I wear it down. I... I plane surfaces without realising it. I cannot even touch myself. I'm having a bit of a shocker. Hmm. Well, have you thought about accessorising? What? Well, you know, what about some gloves? Gloves? What is gloves? Take these. Hmm. They go over your hands. Oh. Ah. Hand sheets. Never before have I felt the soft contours of my face. Never have I lightly caressed the angular frame that is my torso. Oh, this is great. Now I can love myself. Oh, my. Oh, 
Love, love. Love, love. Oh, love, love. Ah. Can I keep these? Yeah. Oh, thank you. No one's ever given me a gift before. It's fine. If ever you need help, general DIY, or I'm very good with coving, simply blow this horn and I shall repay your kindness. Bye. See you later. Saturn, Jupiter, Pluto, Mars, Venus, George, Kurt, Chrissy. That is a list of my best friends in order. Order of preference. Oh, uh, yeah. The open road. This is more like it. A man alone with his dreams. That's me, Howard Moe. What's that? A hitchhiker? Yeah, right, I'm gonna stop for you in this dark wood. I don't think so. So, are you going far? Do you live around here, do you? Well, obviously not in the woods. It'd be weird if you lived in the woods, wouldn't it? Sure. <clears throat> Strange. What's in the box? What's that travel sweets, is it? <laughs> travel sweets. That's one of mine. <laughs> Big box like that with small sweets in it. That should be quite funny, wouldn't it? Let's <clears throat> so have some music. Ease the tension. <laughs> Of the radio. If you give this man a ride, sweet mama, he will die. Kill her on the road. Too much music in the world, you know. <laughs> <clears throat> Quite a thumb you got on you there. There's a story behind there, isn't it? <laughs> You want to know about my thumb, do you, boy? Intrigue you, does it, boy? My thumb? Let me tell you about it. I come from a long line of hitchhikers. All with bleeding massive thumbs. You see, the thumb is a tremendous boon to the hitchhiker. Helps with work, you know what I mean? The only problem was, when I was a child, my thumb was tiny. Not just tiny, like a single sugar puff. Disgusting! Even my own mother would reel back in horror, like an anaconda. Oh, what is it? Get it out of here! It's tiny! It's horrible, it's revolting! Take your tiny thumb and get out of here and never darken my door again, she'd say. I had to leave the family unit in search of a miracle. I wandered the streets looking for the answer, and people told me of a magic shaman, part man, part hornet. So I went looking for him. I went everywhere. I combed the universe in search of the stripy insect shaman. Turns out he was in a local primary school in the bin, reeling about with the apple cores, like they do. And I stood there with my thumb out, and he stung it, and he stung it. He grabbed onto it. It was like he was making love to it with his sting. In and out, in and out, more and more. Oh, the pus, the pain, the black voodoo, the wet jigsaw puzzle. I didn't know what was happening. Oh, for days I was in a trance. But when I came to, there it was, like a fleshy maraca, a thumb of gigantic proportion. A miracle, I said, a miracle. You're a true wizard. How can I ever repay ya? And he said to me, 500 euros. 500 euros? You won't see penny one from me, you slag. And as I raised my thumb up to smash his tiny skull in, I could see in his little insect face, I could see him thinking, oh, I created that monster. I created that thumb and now it's killing me. My own beast and creation killing me dead. The sweet irony. I think he was saying that. Although well, it was a long time ago, and in hindsight, he could have just been shitting himself. Anywhere here? <laughs> <laughs>